You're watching part of a live workshop I gave where I copy edited and gave feedback on real cold emails and sales prospecting emails submitted by the audience. The video session that we did was quite long. It was about an hour. So I decided to chop it up into smaller bite-sized pieces, which is this video you're watching. There are more parts before and after this video. So if you want to watch them, be sure to subscribe to the Sales Folk YouTube channel as well as the Sales Folk blog where I will be posting them and sharing more information and cold email tips. Let's get started. The audience for this, uh, and it's always really important for us to think about the audience first. I'm just going to do a page break because that's going to bother me. Uh, oh, one second. <laughs> A little bit OCD. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo, page break. Okay, so like I was saying, um, it's really important to think about uh, the audience whenever you're writing an email. So that's why I always ask that. Uh, so let's see, head of data analytics operations. I would say head of data and operations are not necessarily going to be the same email template, especially with if it's going to a company with 5,000 to 20,000 employees. Um, well, I didn't need that. <laughs> um, and I'm not sure I don't have the case studies. So like, I don't know more details around that. Um, I'm assuming that Stonegate is relevant to the company they're reaching out to. Um, I guess one comment I would say right away would be, um, oops, does, I don't have my giant keyboard and mouse because uh, I'm in Razzle World right now recording um, or streaming with you guys. Uh, does the audience know who this is necessarily? Because like, I don't know, maybe they know, but I don't necessarily think you should assume that. Um, I think an issue in general is instead of like saying all of this, uh, try to show the value and explain the benefit in one to two sentences in the email uh, instead of the case study. Um, and the reason for this is like, they won't necessarily click and read your case study um, you can include that case study link, although um, hopefully it's one that's interesting and actionable, otherwise you might lose them. Um, but what I would do instead is make the email more about the value proposition or benefit of uh, whatever that case study is, which maybe, maybe I have the link from the submission, but I don't remember what it was right now. Um, also the subject line, I like that it's shorter, but it's not, um, it's not really like that interesting or clear, like the data driven could be, although I think data driven actually has a hyphen, by the way. Um, but like a publication, first of all, like it's a feature, not a benefit. Um, mm -mm -mm, so I'll say like a uh, subject line should be more compelling or interesting tied to a uh, benefit or something relevant uh, to the audience versus a feature or jargon. So also you don't necessarily know that your audience knows what a pubs is. Uh, they might think it's a bar, right? So, um, Oh, is it actually a bar, the pub company? Probably not, but maybe it is. I Do any of you guys know what Stonegate is? I don't know. We can Google it. Uh, also, it sounds like Stone, Stonegate is a really common name. So is it the farm? Is it the real estate? I don't know, probably not. Um, but with that in mind, like I would probably make it more. So like, here's an example. Uh, we helped, I'm going to change it to Colgate, the toothpaste company, just because that's what it's making me think of. Uh, we helped like, I'll just say 
random example of a case study sentence I made up. Um, so you can say like, we helped Colgate uh, leverage their data to optimize their plants efficiency um increasing uh production by you know 25 percent without in um any changes well i i don't want to say increased twice but we could say I made this up. This is not necessarily at all relevant to what I just put here. Um, but because I don't really know what it's about, um, that's what I made up. And then say, like, you know, call to action could be something like, um, do you have time for a quick call to discuss how we might be able to assist? And this is just a custom insert you could change with whatever you're doing uh, with your data efforts. So like, ideally what the case study sentence should do is paint a picture, show the value, give them an idea of what it's like to work with uh, the company that is sending the email. Um, you would probably want to hit on whatever pain point or benefit before, like I might say, um, I'm sure company X has a lot of great data laying around, but uh, is your team too busy with blah, blah, blah to utilize XYZ data? Maybe. Um, without knowing more, uh, I can't really comment too much more, but this is more compelling than like assuming they're gonna read and click on a case study. Uh, where you haven't even really showed the value. It's it's talking about better decision making, but it's not really going into what any of the specific decisions are or were, which would be much more compelling. Okay, I'll just keep moving. Uh, okay. Any questions you have, please do leave them in the comments. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. It's actually part of a much longer workshop video that we did that was about 45 minutes long. So in order to not have it be overwhelming, I chopped it up. I will be sharing the other parts on this YouTube channel. So do be sure to subscribe as well as to the Sales Folk blog and our email newsletter. Uh, just go to salesfolk.com slash blog. Uh, and you can also on the website sign up for our newsletter. Let me know any questions you have about cold email, sales prospecting, B2B sales, marketing, negotiation, persuasion in general, and I'll try my best to answer them in the comments as well as other upcoming videos. As always, happy cold emailing. Cheers.